Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. IRS, don't miss this important October 17th tax extension deadline. Honestly, I, you know why they call it a deadline? Because if you cross it, your body will be nothing more than a horizontal line on the ground. Like one of those chalk lines you see at a murder scene. The IRS looking over your dead linear body saying, you crossed the deadline and now you are a deadline. Well, you, you can't make a deadline out of me, IRS. I'll tell you what. Why? Because my belly's too round. I mean, I've been trying to make a line out of it for years. It's impossible. I mean, best you could do is make me into a plump, hairy speed bump. Yeah, that may actually be worse now that I think about it. Okay, I'll pay. I'll pay. But honestly, I mean, can't we lower the bill just a little bit, IRS? The deadline approaches carrying its sickle. Okay, okay, I'll pay, I'll pay. Why aren't you worried about COVID anymore, Phil? You were freaking out about it just last week. I'm freaking out! Is it because of the vaccine? Oh, I see, Phil. Why would you care about COVID anymore? Puh, why would I possibly care about the opinion of this pathetic bottom feeder? You're now a helicopter. Helicopters don't get COVID. Huh? B minus! Ah! Hey, the state of California even changed your birth certificate? Wow. Okay, here are your fraudulent documents, Mr. Nahasapima Pedalan. Your US passport, social security card with certificate, and your death certificate. Yeah, I totally understand, Phil. Now you're much more afraid of rain than COVID. Just hold on to that one in your safe deposit box. Rain leading to rust for you helicopters. You know, I just hope to stop COVID, California doesn't mandate we all become helicopters. I mean, I could clearly see that. I hereby decree Planet Express to be our city's new fire department. California hereby declares based on gender, animal, and inanimate object fluidity theory that all citizens must flow their fluid beingness into that of helicopters. But that doesn't make sense. Am I going mad? Or did the word think escape your lips? Anyways, it's just until we flatten the curve. Even though the curve's already flat, but whatever. Anybody who does get COVID clearly did not follow the helicopter mandate and will thereby be arrested. Honestly, I, I don't think we're in good hands here, Phil. Sorry, sir. Doing my best. Who made that man a gunner? IR 2022-175, October 7, 2022, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today reminds taxpayers who requested an extension to file their 2021 tax return to do so by Monday, October 17th. That is once again, Monday, October 17th. While October 17th is the last day for most people to file a Form 1040 to avoid late filing penalty, those who still need to file should do so as soon as possible. So obviously our goal as taxpayers is try to avoid the sticks of penalties and interest. So we wanna be filing by the October 17th deadline in order to do so. So if they have their information ready, there's no need to wait. Clearly, from the IRS's perspective, they would like to have people filing as soon as possible so they can kind of, my assumption would be that they would like to get through the backlog of these returns that are going to be going in for the returns on extension before they get into the next filing season for 2022. So the earlier, the better from the IRS's perspective so they can, you know, get through their backlog that they have. So, however, some taxpayers may have additional time. They include members of the military and others serving in a combat zone. So if your life's at risk and you're in a combat zone, the IRS will be gracious enough possibly to have an extension of time even beyond like normal extension time. They typically have 180 days after they leave the combat zone to file returns and pay any taxes due. The IRS calls special attention to people hit by recent national disasters, including Hurricane Ian. So if you're currently in your home, as your home floats away off into the ocean, 
the IRS may be gracious enough also to give you an extension in that situation. Taxpayers with an IRS address of record in areas covered by the Federal Emergency Management Agency disaster declaration in Missouri, Kentucky, the, the island of St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands and members of the tribal nation of the Salt River, I'm going to mispronounce this, Pima Maricaba Indian community have until November 15th, 2022 to file various individual and business tax returns. Taxpayers in Florida, Puerto Rico, North Carolina, South Carolina, parts of Alaska, and Hins uh, <clears throat> County, Mississippi, have until February 15th, 2023. This list continues to be updated regularly. Potentially affected taxpayers by recent storms should visit that disaster relief page. There's a link to that disaster relief page here so you can check out if you believe that you might be subject to an extension due to that disaster relief. You can see the updated list here. There'll be a link to this in the description. It's on irs.gov for the latest information. IRS free file and other resources. Now remember that the IRS has this kind of deal with third party preparers to allow people to have a free file if their income is below a certain threshold which is a great deal, especially these days, because the tax code has been changing from year to year more so than it has in the past. And the complexity of the tax returns, especially for low income individuals, has been changing a lot as they kind of uh, change the refundable credits. So actually lower income tax returns have become more complex. So you really would like to not have to do your tax return by hand. You would like to be using some kind of software or have a tax preparer helping you with it. And so you could get access to the software here. You really want to do that before the extension, not just because you'll be subject to the sticks of the IRS hitting you with late penalties and so on, but also because you might not have access to the software after that point in time, which will make filing after that point in time more difficult. I think this is the last date in other words, that the IRS can kind of strong arm these third party companies to actually provide their software for free for individuals with income below a certain threshold. So you got the link to it. It's IRS free file here available to any person or family with an adjusted gross income AGI of $73,000 or less in 2021. Leading tax software providers make their online products available for free. Taxpayers can use IRS free file to claim the child tax credit, the earned income tax credit and other important credits. IRS free file fillable forms, there's a link to that here, is available for taxpayers whose 2021 AGI is greater than 73,000. Now notice if your income is greater than 73,000, usually that used to mean that your tax return is gonna be more complex because generally more income would generally come along with more complexity in the tax preparation. Although these days, note, that the low income side of things are going to be subject to a lot, a lot of those refundable credit rules. So those can actually be more complex sometimes. But once you get above a certain threshold of income, your, your tax returns also become more complex and you also might have more needs such as planning needs. So you might want to at that point in time be working with a tax professional that you're going to be sticking with for some time into the future to help you out with not just the tax preparation, but those planning needs. I wouldn't I, and at the very least, you might want to then fill out your tax returns with the use of tax software rather than the free fillable forms, because that's kind of like filling out the tax returns by hand, which again, the tax code's been changing a lot for the last couple of years, more than normal and more becoming more complex in some ways. So I would think the use of tax software would be a good tool that you'd want to be putting into place. So in any case, uh, the, and so if you're comfortable preparing their own tax return, so there's a free option for everyone. I think the IRS just points that option out because the IRS likes to claim that there's a free option for everyone. And there is, but again, most people that would like to use software because it's gonna help you to, to limit any errors and file properly. But online account pro provides information to help file an accurate return, including advanced child tax credit and earned impact payment amounts. There's a link to that here. Your online account is becoming more and more important, which is kind of good because that you would think that the IRS 
uh, login information and the account information should be secure. They should be able to do it in a secure way, similar to how most people kind of deal with their financial institutions these day and days and use the online resources for that. But as the as that happens, as people can get access more readily to their online accounts, it also allows the IRS to do some more complicated things as they have been doing, giving out these prepayments and whatnot, which actually makes this whole tax process a little bit more complicated uh, in general. So there's pros and cons. Every time the technology advances something to make say tax preparation easier, what ends up happening is of course the IRS wants more information. They want more stuff. So in any case, you got AGI amounts from last year's tax return, estimated tax payment amounts and refunds applied as a credit. You could find some of that stuff on your account. So taxpayers can also get answers to many tax law questions by using the IRS's interactive tax assistant tool. So if you got a tax law question, you can check that tool out. There's a link to it here. Additionally, taxpayers can view tax information in several languages by clicking the English tab located on irs.gov homepage, schedule federal tax payments electronically. So you can just pay them electronically here. The IRS loves that. It's probably the easiest thing to do at the same time. Taxpayers can file now and schedule their federal tax payments up to October 17th due date. They can pay online, by phone, or with their mobile device and the IRS to go app. So if you're out like on a roller coaster or something and you just you could just pull out your IRS to go app and pay the IRS while you're while you're doing that. Although I don't think the rules usually allow you to do that, but I mean, theoretically, you can do that. That's the cool way to do it. I don't have the app yet, but I might get it. I might get the app. When paying federal taxes electronically, taxpayers should remember electronic payment options. There's a link to that here are the optimal way to make tax payments. So the IRS likes the electronic tax payments and they probably are the easiest way to make a payment. They can pay when they file electronically using tax software online. If using a tax preparer, taxpayers should ask the preparer to make tax payments through an electronic funds withdrawal from a bank account. So most tax software has the capacity to do that, although you'll have to give them your banking information to do that. Online account and IRS direct pay allow taxpayers to pay online directly from a checking or savings account for free. So note, that's still a pretty easy option as well. So if, you're, if you don't wanna give them or put into the tax software your banking information, you could go onto IRS direct pay onto the website and so on and pay that way which is pretty easy and you can still check your accounts. It's still an electronic payment in essence and so on. So you could schedule payments up to 365 days in advance that way. Taxpayers should be aware uh, they will need to create an account to use online account services. So clearly, you know, not you, you have to have an account in order to use your account online. You got to create one. So choices to pay with a credit card, a debit card or digital wallet options are available through payment processors. So you could use a credit card, although you might have credit card fees to pay with a credit card. The payment processor, not the IRS, charges a fee for these services. The IRS to go mobile app provides mobile friendly payment options, including direct pay and debit or credit card payments. So that's the cool way to pay the IRS. I think a lot of people actually do that. It's, it still seems a little unusual to me to, to do the taxes on the phone, but you know maybe that's maybe that's the best option people a lot of people have. So in any case, the IRS to go app is available for payments as well. You got the electronic federal tax payment system. That's the EFTPS. There's a link to that here. It's convenient, safe, and easy, says the IRS. Choose to pay online or by phone using the EFTPS voice response system. EFTPS payments must be scheduled by 8 p.m. Eastern time at least one calendar day before the tax due date. So there's links to all that kind of stuff here and uh, so you can check it out, especially get, get access to that tax software. If you haven't filed, make sure you get the payment in before the deadline so you don't get hit with the sticks of the IRS penalties and interest and so that you don't lose access to the free software that makes the tax filing much easier.